Scott Fowler, extraordinary singer songwriter. All right. Yeah, here in Dallas, Texas, man. How's uh, how's the tour been treating you so far? It's a beautiful thing, man. Beautiful. Nice. Tour's been good. It's good to see you, Michael. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, look, we're here to talk about your new album. Correct me if I don't pronounce this right. The Bura. The Bu. Well, Bura, Buddha. However you want to say it, as long as you say it. What's it mean? What it mean? Buddha. The Buddha is like a, it's like a hurricane force wind that comes off the Adriatic. It's between like uh, Italy and Croatia. I see. Well, look, the new album, I've heard it a few times already just this week when I got it. Um, very diverse. Uh, the selection of tunes, great musicians. Tell me a little bit about the musicians you, uh, you got to do this project. <laughs> All my friends. I see. All my friends. Uh, uh, I didn't call them until I I, uh, I actually started making the record, and uh, just one by one, I just started to call them. Um, I think the first person to act, to actually come into the studio and do anything and do any playing was Will Calhoun, Calhoun from Living Color, and he just happened to be in Los Angeles. Called, and I said, "Where are you?" He said, "I'm in L.A." I said. I'm in the studio. We'll come by. I'll be right there. That's it. And that was it. Uh, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of great, great players. A lot of great players. Uh, most of them I I've met, you know, years ago. Um, uh, you see, uh, Shankar El Shankar is on the record, and I hadn't up until. Uh, I saw him to do this recording. I hadn't seen Shankar for maybe 20, more than 20 years. It had to be more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. Still had that connection. Mm -hmm. Well, the opening track, Shake It, I love it, man. It's, it's, that's, that's like the power song to me. It's, it's got a lot of rock in there. It's got some great guitar works by Phil X. Phil X. Yeah. Phil X, Robert Davis on guitar. Robert is the cat that I wrote and produced most of the stuff with, or all the stuff with. And uh, Skip McDonald from my band Tackhead. You think that's uh, that would be maybe the radio song, the one you guys are trying to push? Is there, is there a particular song you're trying um, to push? I think Shake It's a great radio song. Uh, yeah, it's a great radio song. Uh, for, for a long time, well, you know, that, w that was my favorite track, you know, when we were working on the record. I just loved it. I love Shake It. So track by track, Bura, the LP, mm -hmm. has a diverse music, funk, rock, reggae, even a little rap. What is your version? What is your inspiration laying down some of the music for Bura? Uh, my inspiration is uh, my musical career. You know, all the things that I have done with all the different people that I've done it with. Um, I try to take all those, well, I am influenced by all those people and just people I don't know, but things I hear. but. I, ch I wanted to make a record that, in, that encompassed all of those things. Nice. Well, um, you know, how do you think this compared, Bura, to your first release, Friends and Privileges? Uh, Friends, uh, 2006. Friends with Privileges. Um, you know, f I never wanted to make a solo record. I never wanted to make, ever make a solo record. But, you know, after being in the business as long as I have, you know, Keeping a band together is the hardest. It's like a marriage. Oh my. With four people, or five. Oh or six. my God. It's the hardest thing to do. So. Uh, Thus, we got the Rolling Stones who do it for 50 years. Yeah, exactly. See, That's they. What you know, because I think they're smarter than most. <laughs> they're they're, they're smarter than most bands. Yeah, right. You know, 50 years and still rocking and still together. You know, I don't. Maybe they didn't like each other at some point in that fifty oh, years, yeah, sure. but they're back. You know, and um, you got to keep it professional. Man. Hey, and you know, and for me, it's really great to see. It's great to see the love amongst them. The love amongst them. It's great to see. It's it's so refreshing now to see Mick and Keith. You know, laugh and joke. You know. Instead of, you know, giving each other the eye or, you know, yelling at each other, you know, it's like they, they've come full circle, right. you know, and it's beautiful to see. It's beautiful to see and 
it's great for everybody around that, you know, everybody's not kind of walking on eggshells yeah, like, uh-oh, how's it doing, this. how are they doing today, oh. you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, since we've started this, you know, this, uh, since we started touring this time, you know, it, it is really great to see, you know, them sharing the stage, I mean, really sharing the stage with each other, and like I said, you know, you could, you could feel the connection. We feel connection, but uh, the question you asked was uh, comparison. Comparison. Uh, I was more concerned about the growth as a musician, as a singer. Well, uh, you know, uh, 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 like I was saying, I did. I never wanted to make a solo record, so um, I was kind of forced to do friends with privileges. Hmm. And um, that sounds weird. I mean, it sounds like I mean to be forced to do something like if you're under contract. So, hey, man, get it done. That sound kind of strange. Well, it was, it was, uh, I was self-forced to do it because I, I didn't have time to wait for another band. I didn't have time to wait for the bands that I was in to come around and want to get back together to do. I didn't have time to wait, and I didn't want to wait. And uh, so, so I did um, uh, Friends with Privileges, and the difference between the two records, um, I think uh, they are both wide in range, but this is honed in just a little more. Friends with Privilege was, I think, a little too wide. So I just, I, I, it's still diverse, and I like diversity. And uh, it's important to me that, that I share my musical background in every record that I do. So I wanted to just hone it in a little more. And I wanted it, again, to be rock-oriented or guitar-oriented music. I, you know, it's my favorite instrument is a guitar. And uh, I think I've accomplished it. Yeah, that's good. Hey, man, so let's get into the, one of the, the dark songs on the album. Ooh, uh-oh. Uh, my Friend Sin. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think we all can relate to that. Uh-oh. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, we can. I, I like it, man. I like it. It's a very dark, melodic song, real deep lyrics. And, of course, it has Slash from uh, Guns N' Roses. On that's right. That's some pretty sweet stuff. Dude. That's right. It was. Gotta, gotta check that out. And it was sweet. It was sweet doing that. It give, was. Give me some sweet. insights on that. How did that come out? Um, well, when I was uh, compiling material for the Buddha, uh, Robert Davis, co-writer, producer of the project, we spent a lot of time together. You know, writing, listening. You know, uh, Fabian, pick up the phone, man. Pick up the phone. See who that is. Yes, uh, give me one second. Let me. Uh, who's calling, sorry? Mr. Cliff. Okay, one second, thank you. Hey, brother, what's happening? You know, I was just thinking about you. I'm, I'm doing an interview right now. As soon as it's over, I call you. Okay, I'll come to your door. Okay, bye. We're going to have to decide. That's Matt Clifford, a uh, keyboard player. Oh, and yeah? uh, I'm, I got some stuff that I'm doing for chess records. Oh. And he's got a rig in his room, so I'm gonna go down to his room and do the vocals and send it to Marshall, Marshall Chef. Yeah. Not right now. No, after we're done. <laughs> okay, thanks, man. I appreciate that. After we're done. <laughs> Sorry, back to that song. Uh, my okay. Sin, my friend Sin. Mm -hmm. Slash. My friend Sin. Okay, so as I was saying, I spent a lot of time with Robert Davis. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time listening, talking, playing, and singing, and. Um, this particular day, I go to his house. I always I like to, I like to work. I like to get started early in the day, and I work until the next day. But I, it's important that I get started early. I go to his house early in the day, and I walked in. And he said, "B, I got a call from a friend. Okay, what's happening? Uh, he's doing a movie, and uh, he asked if you know if maybe you know we could write, you know, the title track." Okay, Robert, what's the movie? I don't think the movie had a title. I said, well, tell me what, what's the, the premise. Said, yeah. It's about a preacher. It's about a preacher who is, you know, holy roller by day, but at night he goes into the dark side. Oh, boy. That and I said, oh, there. shit. <laughs> I said, are you serious? Yeah. I said, mm, that sounds like me. That sounds like me. That did. Yeah. I, said to, I said that to myself. That sounds like me. So I said, what you got? 
And he just, he said, well, you know, I've been messing around. Well, I got this kind of thing. And he started playing that, that blues lick. And I said, okay. Put, I said, let's lay it. Let's lay it down. He said, well, uh, should, I put, I said, should I put the guitar? F I said, go on, put it down first. So he put it down. I said, okay, set up the mic. He said, you ready to lay it down? He said, I said, yeah. He said, but you, we need to write. I said, I got it. He said, you got it. I got it. He, he started to strum, and I started to hum. And then, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, this song was done. No, that's pretty quick. Right? No, that's, that's, look. Those are the best songs that come out, though. Yeah, because, you know, good songs don't grow on trees, or everybody would have one. But I was... I was I was really pleased that it came so quick. Uh, I just I I just related to the subject so much that I I didn't have to write much on paper. A lot of it just came. It came. Like you said, it, it, it was so familiar to you that it, it was so uh, you know it just flowed right out. Uh huh huh. Mm -hmm. Giving praise by night, huh? Did it scare you? Kinda. Because it was like, oh shit, what's going to happen what next I'm time? <laughs> no, no, I knew exactly <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> I drank from the devil's cup. I drank from the devil's cup. Sweet was the flavor. Slash Slash played lead, and that was just that was a, it was a just a treat to have him, a treat to have him. Um, like, look, I did this all myself. I didn't have a record company. I didn't have a record budget. I just had a lot of friends, and uh, my friend, my friend Lee Bench. Lee Bench owns uh, the studio. Lee Lee owns the studio, and uh, I think uh, I think it's partners with Steve Lukather. Right. And the name, right, and the name of the uh, studio is the Steakhouse, the Steakhouse Recording Studio. So I had, you know, Lee was there, Kenny Eisenagel, the, uh, the engineer, Cat runs the studio. They were, they were there, and I called Slash. I called Slash maybe a day or two days before and asked him if he would be around. And he said, well, you know, I'm recording a record, and I would love for you to come and play. And he said, sure, well, what time and where? <laughs> no, it was that, that, easy. that easy. It was that easy. He came with his tech, his guitar, no entourage, and no bullshit. He walks into the studio, put straps on. What do you want me to do? Played him some stuff. He warms up a bit. Bernard, what do you want me to do? I said, play. Just play. You know, I'm... When I'm producing a record, it's, it's important that I get from them right. before I start feeding them shit. Right. If they get stuck, then I'll feed them. I, I have an idea of what I want, but I, you know, I you. you know, give me something else, you know? And, well, uh, you know, I mean, you, you know who this man is. You know what he's done. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to coach him. I don't need to coach him. And uh, I, I knew what a, what a, uh, what a, complete player he was because uh, uh, again I had the uh, I had the uh, privilege of producing a, a Ronnie Wood solo record mm -hmm. and Ronnie Wood and Slash are very good friends mm -hmm. so Ronnie said hey Bernard I want to have Slash come in I'm like great and I got to see Slash greatness the magic, yeah. Yeah, oh the, yeah the him and, and you know with his singer Miles Kennedy they're like they're like one of the best rock and roll bands mm -hmm. besides the Stones mm -hmm. <laughs> on the road <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, Slash, Woody uh, Wichel. Did I pronounce that right? Wadi. Wadi. Wadi Wachtel. Wachtel, yes. 
Lucas Nelson, Willie's Willie's son. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bassist Daryl Jones and a few others. Uh, so many di diverse group of talent on this record. Um, it's good to have connections. <laughs> yeah, it is good to have. It is. It is. But, you know. Uh, with, any in particular musician that you would like to maybe you know engage with and for a future project? Well, I have to put you on the spot. No, well, I mean, you know, well, I say for this record, there were there were a few guys that I would have loved to have uh, uh, participated on the record, and uh, there's some guys that are on the record that I would have liked to have participated more. Um, one you person. Get. You get what you can. Yeah, and one person that I had been uh, I had been desperately trying to find was Billy Gibbons. Oh wow! I'd been trying to find Billy Gibbons and. Um, I had feelers out, hey man, find Billy for me, find Billy for me. Then I found out Billy, had, Billy was on the road, he was doing ZZ, ZZ dates. So uh, I was on my way somewhere to do something and I'm walking through uh, LAX and uh, I'm walking past, I guess a bookshop or something and uh, Bernard. And I turned around and there's Billy. <laughs> I heard you've been looking for me. <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny. I said, yeah, Billy. That's I, Billy. <laughs> I said, yeah, I've been looking for you. He said, what's happening? I said, well, I'm working on a solo record. He says, oh, man. He says, listen, I got, a few, I got some ZZ Top dates, you know, to, to do. He said, but if you're still working on the record by the time you're finished, by the time I'm finished, I'm happy to come. But uh, I think uh, I probably finished up before that time, so... That didn't happen, but you know. Also, I was. That's a great story. Man. You know, I'd love to hear that. Uh, Charlie Drayton, Steve Jordan. Uh, I would love to have had them on the record. Uh, I did try to call uh, uh, Stevie Salas from uh, my old band Nickel Bag. I tried to call him. He didn't show up. We uh, just put out a book. I mean, we helped him with some images from. A, did you? Yeah, some Rod Stewart images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, there are a few people that I wish uh, I wish. Oh, it's always record number three. I, don't wait too long. Oh <laughs> well, I, I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wait as long as I did between the uh, friends with privileges in this one. Well, back to the CD. Uh, we go from the dark side to a rock song now to a mellow song. Mm. And uh, I was reading some of the liner notes on here. Um, See you again. Yeah. Another another easy song. It seems like easy for you to together but you use the lyrics from another song that was written down oh uh, yeah 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 um again um robert and i you know shedding you know and he played me this idea well actually that that w that song originally was a song that he had written with someone else for something else the something else wasn't happening and he said listen i want you to hear this and now i heard that song but it was a it was a different arrangement it was an up tempo thing believe it or not like, this is, this is yeah so he's playing and i'm like what the hell is that he said oh that's that song blah, blah, blah. i just slowed it down i slowed it down i'm like man i'm loving this so i just I needed something to sing. So I just started singing a lyric that I had written for something else. Uh, and I changed some of it around, you know, and I added some stuff to it. Right. And uh, after I, I remember being really sick that day, that, that day that, uh, that, we were, that we were messing around with this song. I loved it. It's definitely one of the most it's different from most of the songs on the, on the mm -hmm. album. And it's, a, and it's a ballad. I love ballads. Yeah. I love love songs. Mm -hmm. Some of the best songs ever written are about love. Yeah. And, uh, so intimate, so personal. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was very personal and, you know. You know, what you were saying about changing the range, because like, there's somebody you might know, he, uh, he was a writer himself, uh, Sir Earl Toon. Earl yeah, he played with uh, uh, Cool in the Gang. Wrote, wrote some of the big hits. From that okay, band. okay. He's a local guy here in town, and um, you know, I work with some young bands. And he he told me, he goes, you know, you know, what's, you know, he heard some of their music. He goes, you know, these guys, they're good, but they need to change some of their music around. Just right. to reinvent themselves. Tell them to do this. He kept telling all this, and I had to record it, and I, and I played for these guys. And then, you know, of course, the young kids go, ah, he don't know what he's talking. About. He don't know what he's talking uh, about. A month or two later, they changed, rearranged one of their songs, and it became a bigger. You know, he, he he knows what he's talking about. 
he knows what he's Sometimes talking you gotta, about. You gotta change things around. Sometimes you do, and I mean, you know, the Stones are the perfect example of it. I've seen them record stuff, record stuff fast, record stuff slow. The same thing as they were, might mess with it mid tempo, you know. But you know, not everybody has that kind of time. So. Oh, I miss you. I need to kiss you. I'm going insane It's sad But it's true The doubt I put in you The fear I stored in you Still lingers I can't let you Slip through my fingers Home, home is always New York City. That's where home is. But I'm between. You know, uh, you no, you can never take a not 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 out of me anyway. But uh, you know, I'm between New York and Los Angeles. But um, I'm very rarely in either place. I'm, I travel all the time. All right. So back to the back to the uh, the LP. You, you do four covers on this LP. Uh, they're they're kind of you know they range from a classic. The letter by the box top, and, you know, so many bands have done that. Uh -huh. uh, classic number by the Stones, can't uh, can't you hear me knocking? Uh huh. Helter Skelter by uh -huh. the that's like a, you know, and then Dragon Attack. By oh Kenny. right, it Man. is for right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So uh, what, how did you approach this, and, and you know, as far as the the singing and maybe the arrangement of these songs, to what? Make, it, make it your own? Well, uh, let me start with uh, the box tops. The box tops. That's always been a favorite song of mine. And uh, so when I was doing gigs, doing gigs around, and uh, I thought uh, I wanted to try that song, uh, I, I didn't want to do it the way it was recorded. I had to do something different to it. I thought, let me try it reggae. I just kept hearing, I kept hearing it in my head in a reggae, in a reggae way. So I did it. I recorded the song in a reggae, in in a reggae style, and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a lot of vocal things that happen in that track, and that um, a lot of that vocal stuff is a uh, vocal parts that I had written for other people oh. and other things, and uh, so instead of taking those records that I did those on, I just sang it again myself. I didn't use any samples. I did all the voices for that. And then uh, Lisa Fisher was in town, and uh, she added some voices to the voices I had already laid. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it came out really beautiful. Helter Skelter, man, that's like, uh, <clears throat> how could I say it? People. You know, always re relate that to what happened back in the '60s, the Manson murders, uh -huh. uh, the, the stuff that they, um, you know, did, you know, the hor horrific things they did. Mm -hmm. I noticed in, in your line of notes, going back to your booklet, that you mentioned that um, at that time they were trying to point blame to the to the Black Panthers, right? Trying to start a, a race war, right? You know, asshole. Today, that still lives. I mean, we still have race problems in this country. <laughs> Can I ask you your personal take? How, how do you see this, and what, what 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 do you see as a solution? <laughs> I know I'm getting heavy. This is a little bit political. But how do I see it? Yeah, I see it as being really fucked up. You know, I grew up. You know, I grew up in the '60s. Yeah. You know, my older yeah in New York, and my older brother and myself, and you know, kids that we grew up with. We grew up running out of the neighborhoods that we went to school, where we went to school. You did, it was either run or you get killed. And uh, it's sad. It's sad that now shit is still going on. I mean, yes, there has been some growth. Yes, some people's minds have, have expanded. But well, we do have a, a president. 
<laughs> yeah, that don't mean yeah. shit. <laughs> well, it seems like it would help enlighten people's, uh, you know. Yeah, you would right. think. You would think, but obviously not. Obviously not. Sad time. Sad time right now. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. And I stop and I turn and I go for a ride. And I get to the bottom and I see you again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, don't you want me to love you? I'm coming down fast. Inspiration, well, you, as you said, you know. Yeah, what, what made you pick that song out of all the songs? Well, because I was reading an article on, on the internet about that, the whole murder thing. And, um, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'd ha I had heard it before, but as I'm reading it, and then uh, and the, uh, the article said something about, you know, they had put some things on the wall, you know, off the pigs and blah, 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 and they were trying to put that blame on you know the uh, Black Panther parties, Black Panther party, and I thought to myself, what a fucking asshole! Like we didn't have enough problems. Yeah, let's add something else. Like we didn't have enough problems. You're gonna put that mur those murders on us now. Well, let's think of the mindset who was behind all of it. You know, this yeah. guy was totally out there brainwashing people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody yeah. out. Thinking yeah. of Jesus Christ. And, and so, crazy times. And, uh, that, that inspired me to record Helter Skelter. And, uh, um, you know, uh, after we got the track down, I think that's, that, that track is recorded fully live. I'm singing, the band is really? playing. Yeah, I didn't go back in and redo the vocal, none of that. It's the way we record it is the way that it is. That. And so, um, you know, I just uh, went and found, uh, I was looking for different Black Panthers speeches to, to use in, mm -hmm. in the track, and I found a, a, a great speech by Eldridge Kleber, which is a sample that I use. And the funny thing about that, when I recorded that, this whole thing, you know, with the cops killing, you know, black, young black men, it, it hadn't come to the top yet. So when I'm finished and I'm putting the record together and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to it and I said, oh shit, this is going on right now. It's going on right now. That speech is going on right now. 50 years later. 50 years later so, you know, it, it wasn't planned. It, it just happened.